In this video, I'm going to teach you how I go about cloning myself. There's a couple of things I make sure that I have in order first, and that number one is this tripod over here. It's important for me to have the same angle, but also a stationary object, because if the camera was moving around, it would definitely affect how my clone appeared. So the tripod does allow for a lot of consistency in my shot. Another thing I do is I make sure that I have another piece of clothing, <laughs> very close, because I use natural lighting, so I'm aware that the lighting would change. And I like to have my outfit close by, so that when I change, then the lighting is similar in both my first shot and my second shot. And then I make sure that I'm going to stay in one area and I'm not going to cross over into my clone area. So I'll make sure that I take up one side of the camera, and so for this example, I'm going to sit here and my clone is going to sit over here. I'm also not going to try and move too much around me, meaning the pillows or even this uh, bars on the table, just because I want to try gain an element of continuity in both shots. I also like to make sure that I have filler shots <laughs> because if I'm giving my clone space to speak, then I want to make sure like I'm just sitting, smiling, not looking too awkward, which I definitely don't always get right. And when it comes to looking at my clone, I try to keep where I think my eyes would be. I try not to look down because then it looks like I'm looking my clone up and down. So I just try to think of where my eyes are and just look in that direction. And hopefully I'm looking straight into the eyes of my clone. <laughs> But otherwise, it's just fine looking to camera, smiling and nodding. <laughs> For a less awkward experience, it helps to create a script, set up a tripod, aim for consistent lighting, have your change of clothing close by, as well as plan not to move around too much. The real magic happens in the edit. Let's jump into Premiere Pro and I'll show you how I go about creating this effortless clone look. <laughs> Jokes, I've still got a lot to learn, guys. I'm still very new at cloning myself. But before we jump into Premiere, just a quick shout out to Sebastian Jefferies because guys, I did not invent cloning. <laughs> no, I was actually inspired from one of his Instagram videos that he shared. So thanks guy, I really appreciate it. And everybody else, I'll show you how I've been inspired to go about creating my own clone. Alrighty, we're in Premiere Pro. First thing I do is make sure that I have my main file synced to audio in my timeline. Then I find an in and out point of the second piece of footage that I filmed of myself. I've selected a piece here already. Now I drag the video only and place it on top of the other piece of footage already hanging out in the timeline. Now make sure that you have the video only file selected and then head up to effect controls. Select the mask bezier. Even though I wear glasses, I still like to enlarge the space and then trace a mask path around the version of me that I shall call my clone. Once I've outlined the space, I shrink my program monitor back to fit. Now I'll increase the mask feather. This helps the clip blend in better with the original footage. All right, now I'll press the tilde key and check out my sequence. Ah, just as I suspected, there were some serious ghost feels. All right, I'm gonna reselect my clip and zoom back in on my program monitor. I make sure that I select the mask in effect controls so that the blue mask path shows up again in my program monitor. I now select certain points on the mask path and pull them out to bring the body back into what felt like a vanishing part of my clone. Now, if I reset the program monitor back to fit and then check out my sequence once again by hitting the tilde key, I can press play to see if there was an improvement. Okay, that looks a lot better. But I could further improve the clone by heading over to the color window and adjusting some of the options here. By just moving things around, the whites, the highlights, the contrasts, the blacks, and the shadows. <laughs> the overall effect of the clone is a lot more realistic. Adding in more light definitely helps the look and feel here. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel if you'd like to see more content from me in the future.
my treat, I will also leave a video for you in the end screen that if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy that one too. But thanks for spending your time with us. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.